Well, it's a good morning to everybody. Let us know if you're in the room. We are live today for your fitness Pilates, high intensity routine that has the demand of your Pilates base, okay? It's video 153. Um, the workout today, I promise you, um, we will get this within 30 minutes. Now the rules will go, if you start to feel as though it's too intense at times and you can't keep up with the breathing and the core connection and the good of technique, then take a moment. If you need to stop at any point, don't stay still. Stop and walk around and focus on getting your breath back. The part of you that will get tired today should be your heart, lung, circulatory system, but equally you might feel you, you can't control your technique. Both of those reasonings would say, Press pause for a moment, don't push on, but do walk around, capture your breath again properly, and then join in. So it's good morning, Susan, Helen, and Sarah, Michelle, Ken. Great to see you in the room. Um, there is an option, obviously, of using a glute band and weight. So if you're a hungry animal type person who has just been doing so many workouts through um, every part of every day, then you might want to add those devices of torture to your workout. I'm not doing it, I'm doing it pure and simply. I want the best rhythm, morning manner, I want the best technique, and the sense of being able to continuously breathe deeply in and out. And it's a hello to Lindsay and Debbie and Margaret Lee. I remind you again, if cardiovascularly, in other words, the sensation of your respiratory breath reduces in an unhealthy way, you press pause, not by standing still, but by just stopping what you were doing with me, wander around, and then join in when you feel as though you've got the breathing under control again. Or if you get muscle fatigue and your technique goes, same principles again. Don't stay still so much as reset, capture your sense of your body, and then continue. Good morning, Lorna. I will make this work out 30 minutes. I'll keep my eye on the clock. So if you see my head turning to look at the clock, that's what's going on there. Um, I've, I've not done anything pre preparatory for my own body. Normally I'd have done an hour's Pilates workout and then I teach whatever it is I'm teaching on Facebook. So I'm bringing myself to this as the same way that you're bringing yourself to this. Um, the other thing is, just so you know, I've, I've increased asthma symptoms for whatever reason, I seem to have got a little bit going on there. Um, if I end up coughing, um, can't do anything about it, I will do my best to lead the workout um, with the best health I can muster. Um, make sure that when you're ready for this workout, if you need a head cushion for your lying down positioning, then find your head cushion. Whichever way, the first part of the workout is lying on your back. So if you want to do that now with me, take yourself lying down and into breathing. You're, you will experience an increased pace and therefore there's gonna be kind of that picking up of movement patterns during the workout. I will start relatively slower, not slow, but slower. Good morning, Thomas. We lie on our back, arms are by your sides, chin nodded in, and the first thing you want to be aware of is where the ground is underneath you, through the back of the pelvis, the back of the rib cage, the base of the skull. If it's on a head cushion, that's also fine. Know where your first four to five breaths are, inhaling and exhaling, where the resting part of the spine is connecting to the ground, including the back of the pelvis. Two or three more moments, and then this starts the workout. Exhale to chin nod and curl, you're in neutral. Inhale and back down. Exhaling, feel the rib cage flex and the oblique cinch in. You want the same range of motion, both sides of the obliques as you're lowering and lifting. And we have five more. Exhaling. Inhale and keeping the chin in. So go with your breath, we have three more. Keep grounded through the back of the pelvis and the feet. You have two more. Inhaling, lowering. Exhale, curl. Can stay. Pick up your right leg to tabletop, put your left hand behind your head. Breathing in, down you go. Breathing out, curling up and pointing the elbow across the body to the leg that's in the air. And four more. You still want to keep the shoulder blade 
so that you're rolling to the tip of it on the right hand side with the right leg up in the air. You have two more. Stay grounded at the back of the pelvis. Make the breathing as deep and clear as you can. Okay, the next time you'll curl up, you'll switch over hands and switch over legs. Inhale down your flow. Exhale, flexing and slight rotation. Go to the concentration of the breath and making sure the pelvis is in shift. Three more. Inhale. One more. Stay. Pick up both legs, centre the body. In, two, three, four with the breath. Imprint in the lumbar spine now. Out, two, three, four with the breath. Shrink, hollow, pull the navel to the spine. Inhaling, remember you can curl and uncurl if it's in your neck. Don't bypass your own needs for keeping safe. And then we take it for the next five. Legs extend and inhale, they bend. Breathing out, out they go, breathing in, in they come. Exhaling and inhaling, go for two more. Shoulders are chilled, shoulder blades are off, only just, and let that go. All the way up onto your hands and knees, find your all fours positioning, spread the fingers, find your shoulders so that they're over your wrists, and the knees, shins flat against the floor. Inhaling and exhaling then, take the right leg out, left arm out, and return back in for five, that's one. Exhaling, either pulling in or pushing out, whichever way, keep the breathing equal. You'll notice there's a slight pickup in the pace. You've got two more just here. And one more. Transitioning to the other side. Inhale, reach, breathe out, pull back. Inhaling. So the breathing is still deep, you just take it at, at a different pace. Inhale, deep in through the nose. Exhale, pulling under and feeling the navel to the spine. And this is the last one. Inhaling and breathing out. Ready for your knee hoppers. Exhaling then, press the ground away with the feet and the hands. Inhaling and lower. Feel the belly massage in, the abdomen shrink. You're using the navel to the spine, the pelvic floor, and your obliques. Breathing, exhaling up, inhaling down. Making sure you resist twist. Push that ground away. You've got four more. And make this your last one. Take your hands as wide as your mat is. If your setup's good, your delivery of movement patterns will be good. Breath in as you go down into your chest press. Wide hands off the mat. Exhaling. Inhale. Exhale. Feel the slight increase of pace. Your range of movement needs to make sure you keep this symmetry. Elbows go wide open. Navel to spine. And you have five more. Let's go. Breath in. Lowering. Breath out. Push that ground away. Don't give up on your trunk stability. Don't let your belly hang. Abdominals are core connected. You have one more. And we're up to stand. Find yourself into your um, standing parallel legs. Line up your feet with your edge as much as that helps. And then inhale into your squat. Exhale back up. You know how to do these moves. We've got just two more at the slightly slower pace, and then you're going to take it upping the pace. So now we go lowering and lifting, the more rhythmical. Three more, two more, and up you go. Take your feet wide, use the lines on the mat. Inhale, down you go, exhale. If you want to push your arms strong, pull them back as though you're pulling on something, you might find you go inhaling and exhaling, particularly if you've developed your breath through the Pilates practice. You've got three more, two more. What matters is you keep an even pace. Last one to stay down, what I call the sliding sumo. So sliding wide squat. You're hinged, you're in the sumo squat. You push the ground away, 
pull the ground up to you. The feet push and pull. This is back to that sensation of grounded. Through the heels, the outsides of the feet. As you go there and back, inhaling, there and back, exhaling. And there's a count of 20 here, isn't there? Because you've got that kind of both sides equally. You should feel a pickup of rhythm in here. Can you feel that? If you need to stay slow, don't worry. Just finish when I finish. And that's the finishing moment there. Bring yourself to stand. You've got your backwards lunging. Take your arms forwards as you take your right leg back. Settle into what feels like the, the right position for you. Squat or scooter position. And then stand. Backwards lunge. Same leg. I'm doing my right leg. Same leg for 10. And you'll push and pull. Push forwards. Pull upwards. Backwards. Forwards. Stabilising, slow it down again if you've lacked stability. There can't be any joint pain, we don't want to injure you. And you don't want to be injured. Okay, staying back there this time. Staying here then. Sit deeper. Create that um, pulsing. For four, three, two, one. And then what we call mountain climber. Or stepper. It picks up the pace and requires you to do alternating arms. <laughs> I'm going so fast I'm also wobbling a bit. Five, four, three, breathing two, and one, and stand up. Find your squat. Step the leg back, diagonal line, and you come backwards and forwards. Backwards and forwards. Reaching your arm to the floor, stepping behind, keeping your heel up, resisting rotation, twist. Don't worry if the first part of this is slower, it picks up almost as we go down, doesn't it? So as the big range of movement is a little bit slower, last two, and stay down there. In staying here then, You've got your end range move and it can go a little bit more pace. Inhaling and exhaling. And now we'll take it to your mountain climb. See, tap and tap. It's five, four, three, two, one. All right, ready? Bottom end of your mat. Inhale, you squat. Breath out to roll down, breathing in. Two tip your toes. Strong plank moment. Inhaling, back we go. Ground your heels. And I've just remembered I've missed a sequence. Don't worry, I'll add it at the end. Rolling down and picking up to tip toes. Find your strong plank. Bend the knees. Round your heels, reverse roll up. This is the third. Now the heart rate, the body heat should be in there. Remember, if a joint feels twingy, you've got a, a poor alignment, slow down and find a good alignment. If you're breathing continuously throughout, your body heat will start to increase. If you're not really breathing, it won't. Inhaling and exhaling. And you've got another four of these um, sequences. One, roll down, plank, reversing. Exhale, pull the heels down. Remember, if you want to slow it down and do less in terms of numbers, but a better technique and protection, then you must do that. Two more. Squat. Always use your rolling forwards with a breath out. If other things get a bit blurred, and always use your breath out to roll back up. Find your squat, find your rolling down, and find your plank. Okay, all, onto all fours. In 
in your forced position, you're going to go out to plank again and then do knee taps. In other words, pull one leg under. It's probably leg pull more than knee tap. Inhaling, exhaling, crown of the head forwards, keeping as much symmetry as you can for another four, three, two, last one, and lower down. We're supposed to be doing some single shoulder work. So from here, I'm not going to de develop it into a twist, just a lift and a lower. That's one, lift, keep the ground under the foot and the armpit of the hand. All right, you've got two more this side and one more and flick over. I told you it'd be a pace. This is about right, there's nearly 15 minutes gone. Are you ready? We go one and two. You're trying to keep the trunk sides the load through the front leg, which is your top leg. The load is through the back of the ankle, side of the ankle, sorry, on the back leg, and the side shin. One more. And because I missed out the star squats, stand up again, find your squat, and star. Your squat, pushing your arms forwards, star. As your arms go forwards and pull back, inhaling down, exhaling. Remember, you don't kick the leg too high. If you've got your mat as a sensation of awareness of space, imagine pointing your foot to the end of the mat or off the side of the mat if you're working narrow ways. Inhaling, exhaling, keeping the stability, pressing down through the heel. You know these blets. The reason we're keeping familiar patterns of movement is that you can execute them safely at a better pace, therefore getting the heart, lungs and circulatory system more involved. Are you ready? Same side. One, crouch. Two, sink to squat. Three, and four, inhale, exhale. Take control of your breath for another four, and three, stay to the outside of the foot. Two, side lean. One, ready for your other side, going. One, and two, find out where your leg goes and where your gaze goes. Three, inhale, exhale, four, and five. Your side leaning, six, it's in your side bottom. You're not letting your arch roll. Three more, two more, last one, and take a walk, take a breath, take a sip of water, and which I'll do the same. If you're breathing deeply now, you've got 60 seconds, and I think that was more or less right. So if you do a proper Pilates high intensity workout, it should be between uh, 20 to 30 minutes. And really this is our entry level, moving safely, effectively, not bypassing technique, to get what we need to be, which is heart lung circulation and stability. A way of breathing as you settle ready for the next phase would be to take control, breathe in the nose, in through the nose for a count of four. Do that. Suspend the breath for a count of seven. And then exhaling for a count of eight. In through the nose, count of four. Suspend, counting to seven. Exhaling. For as close to eight as you can. Do that two more times. This will bring your heart rate down. It will bring the respiratory system back to feeling a little bit more um, passive-eyed, soothed, because you're going to ramp it all up again. So just do two more sequences of that breathing. Inhaling. 
suspending to seven. Exhaling over eight count. One more moment, people. Exhaling over eight. Okay, you should have calmed the system right down. You're feeling ground under a neutral pelvis, sacrum flat, tiny air gap between the lumbar and at the back of the ribs. If you want to have your hands behind your head for this sequence, you can. Exhaling. Use the opening abs to make control of breathing and get a true core connection. Three more. The elbows can fold in. Remember how we do that butterfly sensation with the armpits arms. And now keep this going and then exhale, alternate one leg up, pull both elbows to it, inhale, lower that leg down, breathing out, other leg up, inhale, lowering down. Core control, you're staying in your neutral. If you need to be in a gentle imprint, that too is fine. What you mustn't feel is anything in the back or neck or the holding of the breath. You've got to keep the breathing going. The breathing primes the whole heart, lungs and circulatory system, creating heat and a flowing demand. Last one. Keep the leg up. Reach hands forwards. Bring both legs together, tightening at the thighs. Inhaling and exhale, push the legs away. Breathing in. You can either keep your arms by your sides, whichever way your nose is to your navel. And wherever those legs go, there's no movement from the pelvis, the imprint of the lumbar. And every breath out, the inner thighs pull tight together. And rib cage creases um, in towards the navel. Are you ready for three more? A really good breath. Last one. Knees in and onto your hands and knees. Set up your start shape, which is the all fours. Know where the ground is under the shins and the knees. And breath out to stretch the right leg, left arm. Breath in and return. Look for strong legs, reaching to genuinely straight. And the constants of the pelvic position staying stable and alternating sides so that i've got a constant exchange and therefore demand from left to right right to left which is real life experience four more feel the leg strength hamstring connect last time and same shape, still all fours, tuck the toes under the feet, nod the chin in, exhaling, up you go, higher than the shoulders of the pelvis, and exhale lower, inhaling up, breathing out down. Watch your thighs lift and lower, keep your shoulders away from the neck, and now make the breath go up and down on the inhale, up and down on the exhale, never letting even on the inhale, the tummy go, and never allowing the shoulders to reach um, out of their neutral, which is shoulder away from the neck. Three more. Two more. One more. And grounds again in neutral. Arms wide, chest pressing, shoulders away from the neck. Inhale, elbows spread. Exhale, push. Take control of your breath, feel the journey down, and if you can, moderate to keep symmetry rather than wobbling over to the left, right, or right, left. Five more. You can keep your abdominals pulled in. You can turn your head to one side and then centre it, head to the other side, 
Center it. Last two. Last one. And from there then, standing squats. Find your parallel line. No way your hips are. Inhale down, exhale up. So now let's take a breath again to be lowering and lifting with one part of the breath, lowering and lifting with the other part. Remember I said that if this is going into the wrong places, then you slow it down. You may do fewer reps, but you'll do better reps, okay? You'll get a better reward. You only get the reward of this if you're staying pain free and avoiding any injuries that you existingly have and that the breathing is your constant, okay? Staying up. Take the position to wide feet, use your lines on your mat as you find your sumo squat, nod the chin in, you sit your bottom backwards of your heels, your spine shape stays neutral and follows, inhaling, lowering and lifting, exhale, lowering and lifting, inhale, lowering and lifting, and breathing out lower and lift. Down there for to stay this time. So we stay down there and we have what I call the sliding squat. You slide, this is one from side to side, two side to side. Push the ground away, pull the ground under you, feel the feet grounded and the knees pull over the uh, middle toes, <sighs> exhaling and inhaling. The rhythm should have an equal push and pull, no side being more than the other, and the pelvis travelling across the horizontal line with the rest of the trunk following. Have my arms here. You could almost have a ceiling above my head, and I'm sliding the constant horizontal plane of movement. I'm keeping my thighs pulling out, the outsides of my feet working with the ground and my heels, and let that go. Bring yourself back up to stand, and you've got your lunge position. Okay, find your first squat, step the leg back, sink back and fall, down. Do the first sequence slower, inhale lower, Exhale, refuse to let your back leg go to the ground. You have five more, one, standing up, two, proper stand up, three, four. Now on this fifth one, go down and stay, she says, wobbling all over the place. Go change it slightly into a quad stretch of strength. We've, we've come more upright for this. You've got 10 going straight down the vastus, front thigh of the back leg. Your pelvic position's level, you lower down to where you can go, the back heel's up in the air. If you need to hinge back a bit because it's in the knee, you've got five more, then hinge back to more scooter, three more, two more, and now, mountain climber, slow it down, tap, tap, you never quite stand up. You keep it in the hamstring glute of the front floor leg. Four more. Two more. And one. Find your squat. Take the left leg back. Reach your arms forwards. And hinge back. And tap. Lunge. Scoot is a version of lunge. Hinging, diagonal plane of movement. Back and take the inhale as the slide backwards. Heel stays off the ground, front leg totally loaded. Should be in your hamstring glute of this front leg, although you're getting stronger and stronger. Five more. Three more. I hope you're still breathing. Two more. And stay. Repositioning, holding the hip spine and then inhale lowering and exhale lift the back thigh lined up through the hip through to the armpit straight line back heel absolutely off the floor use your core shrink the tummy five more five 
four, three, keep the nose through the front heel, knee not forward to the toes. Uh, this is your last one. Hinge again, and you've got the tap staying, squatted down through the front leg, and it's mountain climber. <laughs> For some reason, there we go. I overbalance on film, never overbalance on my own. I think it's to do with talking. Four, three, two, <laughs> and one. That was shocking. Ready for your squat to start. Find your squat, arms forward, and alternate the star. Inhale, exhale, and pull. Inhaling, and pull, and now pick up your pace. One. Two more each side. One more each side. And stay. Inhaling, exhaling, staying slightly leaning, not twisting the hips. Landing parallel feet for three, two, one, other side, squat, ten, nine, inhaling, exhaling, six, five, slow down if you need to, do fewer reps, three, and two, and one, and <coughs> Squat. Let's do two breaths for this. So squat, rolling down, exhale. Inhale, find yourself to plank. Exhaling, walk your hands back and return back up. Inhaling, squat. Exhale, roll down, find your plank. Pull yourself back up, inhaling. And exhale, roll up. Blur the breathing through the activity. And again, keep it slow if it's not going to the right place for you. Shrink the touch. Engage your core. One. Forward bending. Into your plank. Bending the legs. Grounding the feet. You have five more. One. Plank. Two. Hinge, rolling spine, lengthen posterior frontal, reversing back, rolling spine. You have three more. One. You should be feeling the firmness of your breathing muscles as the big muscles constantly move and demand that the pump of the heart, your circulatory system, respiratory system are working with their aerobic, anaerobic connection. Depends on your fitness, to be honest. And last time, exhaling. Inhale, find a good plank. So we go tap, pull the knee in, keep the chest over the shoulders. One, two, three. Breathing, four. Pushing the ground away. Don't pull the knees so far in that your hips twist. For four more, three more, two more, and last one, knees down. Take yourself back for a moment. <coughs> Are you ready for single plank? So position one, top leg in front, lift. Take the body up, into single leg, single arm, and come down. Push up, lift. Take the body up. Single arm, single leg down. Three more. Up and reach. Return and up. Reach. Return. One more. Up and reach. Return. You have two sides. Top leg is front, lined up with the mat. Back leg, armpit away. If all you can do is lift 
and lower do so. Otherwise, one and reach and two. Breathe, lift, upwards and over, keeping your pelvis relatively square. And this is three. You have two more people we can do this. This is four. Up and reach. And this is five. Up and reach. And come back down. And to finish your time off, let's roll like a ball. Pull your knees to your chest. Inhaling, pelvic tilt, roll. Exhale, balance. Inhaling, build it for obliques. Exhale. Remember the rules. You only do this because you know you can and you don't have osteoporosis, osteopenia, or bulging discs. Four more. Three, keep a chin in, a ball rolls, doesn't bounce. Last time. And take your legs wide, put your hands to the floor, and say a prayer. All right, people, catch your breath. As you can hear, I know that I've worked to the right level. My heart rate's up, my breath is um, audible, and I'm breathing as deeply as I can in and out. I'm now going to take control of the breath in much the way I told you to earlier on in the workout. So if you finish this moment lying in shell stretch or lying on your front, you breathe in through the nose with your tongue against the teeth. You suspend for the count of seven, same counting pace, and you'll exhale for eight. Now do that until you actually can do that. Initially, you'll find you don't have the capacity unless you're someone who's been a swimmer, there are two people in the room who know what I'm talking about, you'll find that you can do it probably immediately. For us who are just average, lung capacity it is, the discipline of breathing in through the nose over one, two, three, four, suspension for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and expelling, exhaling, over eight, four, three, two, one. Now, once that rhythm is within your controlling domain, you know that you've um, allowed the energy systems, the respiratory system, the heart, lungs, and circulation to normalize. The evidence of fitness is how quickly you can move from being working in your training zone, which is always a maximal heart rate, back into a normal heart rate. I'll leave you with it. I'm going to cough. <coughs> I'll leave you with it, give me feedback, and I'll give you feedback. And here's to a great Thursday in the wet weather. You've done brilliantly for being here, and I feel as though we achieved something we've probably never done before, which was a really pacey workout that actually honored the 30 minute profile that you needed to. I'll see you soon, stay well, and um, it's a goodbye from me. <laughs>